Yes, Lord. Right, welcome to another episode of Court in the Kitchen. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're here. Let's get cooking, y'all. Yo, today we doing soul food with a twist, baby. Look, check it out. So we got three different ways we can do up a pot roast. All right, it's going to be part of a three-part series. Okay, so we got regular pot roast dinner. We're going to put some pot roast carrots and potatoes over a bed of rice. And then you can add whatever other side that you want to. You're going to cook the pot roast low and slow in the crock pot. Okay, so that way you got time to go ahead and do other things. Catch the game. Go ahead and go to church. Do whatever you need to do on Sunday. You're going to come back a little aromatic because it's going to be swoo. Look, the aroma in the house is going to be going crazy. Do you hear me? All right, so look. Part one is going to be just your classic Sunday dinner. We're going to get some pot roast, carrots, and potatoes. And we're going to put that over a bed of rice. And if you want to add another side to it, go ahead. Do what you do, man. You know what I'm talking about? So, look. Part two. Part two is going to be a pot roast sandwich. And then part three is going to be pot roast fries. All right? <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm trying to tell you. But anyway, look. Y'all came here for the food, so that's what I'm going to give y'all. All right? So, look. Let's get off into the recipe, though. <laughs> All right, so then what we're going to do is start off with a nice size roast, okay? So that's about four and a half to five pounds of a roast right there. So you're going to get some sea salt or you can just get regular salt. Use whatever you got in your cabinet, but sea salt is going to bring out better flavor. So you're just going to go ahead and be liberal with this. Go ahead and go crazy. You know what I mean? Go crazy with how much seasoning you put on this because honestly, once we put this in a crock pot, a lot of, the, uh, a lot of this flavor is going to be absorbed into the juice. So anyway, yeah. Hit it over the head. I honestly don't even have a measurement for this, really. So let's just do it like this. Just salt it until you cover the outside of it. All right, next we're gonna move on to our Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. Same thing, go ahead and just hit it over the head. Be liberal, it is not time for really precise measurements. I promise you, it's not gonna really matter like that. So once you cover that outside, make sure you get it all over the back of this. So I know it's about 50, 11 ways you can make your roast and season it up. So you tell me, what's your favorite seasonings to use? But I promise you this one's going to go crazy, though. Moving on, so we're going to go ahead and grab some black pepper. You can get it already pre-ground, or you can go ahead and get the black peppercorns. Put that over the top. Be liberal with it. And then you know what the magic to making your food taste good is? One of the tricks, I, I learned this when I was a little boy, is season both sides of your damn food. Because you know why? <laughs> you already know. Because you're going to eat both sides. So you want that flavor to be in every single bite. Do you hear me? All right. So we're just going to do it in reverse now. So you're going to hit it over the head with the black pepper. And you got your ranch seasoning. And then we got our sea salt. All right. Anyway, while we finish the seasoning that up, let me ask you all this. So what would be your soul food starting lineup, right? So you're going to pick one entree, two to three sides. Go ahead and pick a bread and a dessert. All right. So for me... For me, it's going to be fried chicken, greens, mac and cheese. And then since I'm being a little greedy, go ahead and throw in some yams too while we at it. Oh, and then give me that Hawaiian sweet roll. Yes, Lord. And then you already know, look, I'm from the South. So with our food, we're going to have that sweet tea. You call it iced tea, depending on where you're from. But we're going to get some sweet tea to go along to wash it all on down. All right. But yeah, in the comments below, drop your favorite food combination. I'm curious to see what y'all's will be. All right, so now that we're done seasoning, we're going to go ahead and get a pan and line it with some olive oil. And then we're going to go ahead and drop our roast on in. And then let that thing be, get sizzling, you hear me? So we're going to cook it for four to five minutes each side on about a medium high heat. And look at this crust, y'all. When we get this thing flipped on over, it looks so beautiful. That crust is just gonna help to lock in some of that flavor on the outside. And then look at it, it's just so beautiful. All right, so after we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and transfer this roast on over to our crock pot. Then we're gonna get ready to season that up. And then you're just gonna let the crock pot do its thing. All right, so it's smoking hot right now, right? So what we're gonna do first is grab you a bottle of Coke or a can of Coke and go ahead and pour it in there. Uh, now, the Coke is a little bit counterintuitive, but the reason we do this, it's not going to taste like Coca-Cola. You're doing this so that way uh, the Coke is going to tenderize the meat while it's in the crock pot. Then you're going to add a cup of water, just like you saw right there. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and season this on up so first we're gonna start with some beef bouillon and again with the beef bouillon there's not really a measurement for this because a good bit of this is actually gonna end up being absorbed into the liquid anyway and that's gonna make a nice little juice you know what i mean when we put that over our roast and rice and everything so now don't go crazy and empty out half the damn bottle but you know what i mean just just put enough so maybe you know do a couple of hand like hefty shakes and then you should be straight so we're gonna do garlic salt and garlic powder we're gonna add that in and also add in some onion powder too so you can be liberal with all three of them so you're gonna go ahead and give it a little shake 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 next up we're gonna go ahead and grab our onions now you can slice these cut them up as finely or as thick as you want to doesn't really matter this is your roast ultimately i'm the i'm the tour guy giving you the recipe but yeah so anyway go ahead and drop your onions on in there so the onions what they're gonna do is the natural flavors of the onion is gonna infuse into that liquid while everything's slow cooking and it's gonna complement really well with that ranch seasoning that we were already put over the top of the roast then we're gonna add a little bit more ranch seasoning later on life hack if you don't want to have to cut up your onions and all that, this is what you do. This is what you do right here. Go to your frozen food section. Get some chopped up onions or diced onions. Get those. Throw them things on in there. It'll be just as fine. Don't, don't even worry about it. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Enough about the onions. So we're going to go ahead and get some red potatoes. Cut them all up in half usually. And then we're going to go ahead and drop those in as well. We do those... Uh, first up we can now we got some carrots that we add in here too but we do the carrots last because they cook a lot faster than the potatoes so we want to make sure those potatoes are nice and soft all right so go ahead and stuff them bad boys on in there just like that there real simple and then we'll go ahead and drop them down immerse them into the liquid and we're gonna hit this over the head with a little bit more ranch seasoning reason being because like i said a lot of the flavor is already gonna get soaked up into the uh into the liquid now, after we done did that, go ahead, get your lid covered on up. We're going to set this on low and cook for about four hours. Now, after those four hours, we're going to come back, get our baby carrots, drop them things on in there, just like that. And then, uh, reason why, like I said previously, you don't want to add the carrots in first because then they're going to be extra mushy. And who the hell wants that? And then, lastly, you're just going to go ahead and get your lid covered back up. If you want to give these a nice little stir... So that way you can get everything around, get the carrots immersed into the liquid, great. But then cover it up with the lid, we're gonna cook for another four hours. All right, so look, while the rice is finishing up, we're just gonna make our rice real quick. So rice is really simple, especially when you got one of these, a rice cooker, I swear to God. It, it literally stops working, so you don't have to do a whole, whole lot. All right, so look, what you wanna do? So all that, all that you do when it comes to making rice is how much rice you put in, you're gonna double that up in liquid. So you can get creative with this if you want to. So we got our bag of rice. I'm gonna give you half a cup. Get half a cup of rice, just like that, and then just double up. Depending on how many people you feed. So it's just simple math, really and true, all it is. So you get one cup, get two cups of water. Now, keep in mind, whatever you put in the liquid is gonna get absorbed into the rice. So what I would suggest is either you can do some Cajun seasoning if you want like a Cajun type of flavor, or to keep it simple, you can do some chicken bouillon. It can be a little bit liberal because again, a lot of the water is gonna soak this up anyway. You add your little bit of oil, let that finish, and then by the time that's done, you know what I mean? You're gonna put the roast on the top and you're ready, yo. So then we're gonna get to plate this thing on up in the juices. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do that. That's you, you get a little bit of liquid, so get that seeped into the rice. Mm. So I decided to do mine over some rice and some cabbage on the side. The link for the cabbage recipe is gonna be in the description box below if you want to go ahead and try that on out. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. And yes, Lord. Stay tuned because the next video we got pyro sliders. Man, so look, leftovers do not have to be boring because I swear to God, like growing up, we used to eat pyros a lot. And it was to the point that I didn't really even like it like that as an adult that much. But if you can be creative, if you can be creative, uh, 
you can take those same flavors and make something really dope out of it though. So really simple, it's gonna be great for a game day, great for if you just want a little finger food, cheat, snack, whatever, I got you, I got you. But look, I'll catch y'all on the next video. Thank you.